Realsies. Oh, shit. I didn't put the Discord announcement in my own personal Discord. Um, oh, no, yeah, I did. It's over in Ethan's server today. Class stream live. It's over in Ethan's server today. Space give us. There we go. Alrighty, so I'll just do a quick orientation for the people who just dropped in. Uh, we've, uh, we're covering um, Old Master's studies of a gesture drawing uh, structure and anatomy. And uh, uh, we did actually some of, we actually did some stuff last night. This is some of it right here. We're going to be doing a mix of one to three draw over studies and one to three uh, 20 minute sessions of uh, time poses. Uh, two, five, two, five, and ten minute timed poses of, or even twenty minute time poses of uh, old masters, and also some more modern-ish stuff mixed in there too. Like Rus this is a Russian figure academy figure here, like people who trained in the the practice of the old masters. So uh, to kind of orientate people, uh, we're going to be taking, a, we're going to be paying attention to uh, bony anatomical landmarks. Mainly, as far as anatomy goes, I might talk a little bit about some of the muscle anatomy that's connecting to some things. Uh, we're not going to really dig into it too much, but I want to start maybe next week paying more attention to the anatomy of the back because there's a lot of, the muscles there are pretty complex, and uh, we're going to definitely want to dig heavy into that. But uh, here's a quick overview of the approach we're taking. It's a three-part approach of uh, phases of gesture, structure, and anatomy. And uh, gesture is stuff like this with like, using this kind of like a uh, waterfall ski slope and using um, loose gestural flowy lines to kind of capture the flow and the feel of the pose or whatever. Um, something like this. And then the structure is uh, uh, shapes and structure are more dimensional forms. You can add them directly to the gesture yourself, you gesture, or you can like let's say like you let's say like you made like kind of like like this, for example, for like a, a, a leg joint. You can go in on a, on a structural phase and then just like maybe like box that off or make cylinders out of it or something. But you kind of just use like elements of like shapes and so on make decisions about what shapes you're going to use. You generally will be using um, cylinders, boxes, and uh, and spheres, but you can use other, you can like reshape them and warp them and other things and bend them. Um, anatomy, uh, we're going to be trying to keep things simple as far as anatomy goes. The main things that we're going to be, the main thing we're going to be looking at today is like uh, is the bony landmarks. Um, some of the and the bony landmarks are stuff like this. This little triangulation of the bottom of the rib cage and the stern. Well, here let me bring on one of the other things here. It illustrates this stuff a little better. Oops. So um, these are some of the bony landmarks here. If you need, uh, if you need a guide of uh, the bony landmarks. I have a Twitter post I made with some handouts here with some stuff that'll help on like finding the bony landmarks of the human body. This one but in particular from Michael Hampton is what is the main one I want you to pay attention to. Um, but there's also a good one from Proco and also if you need some help kind of thinking about skeletal figures uh, Andrew Loomis's um, Andrew Loomis's uh, skeleton mannequin is really helpful for that, so I included that in the handouts, and I'm going to post that in Twitch and in over in uh, Discord class. Where's the Discord class? There it is. So. Our first set is going to be a set of twos where we're just going to get warmed up mainly with gesture. You can insert a little structure into stuff too if you want, but we're we're just going to we're going to do a set of twos to warm up to kind of get in the swing of things. So you want to keep things pretty loose. 
Uh, they're just going to be a set of time poses. I'm actually going to um, I'm going to I'm going to reload this real quick because I have a new set of images for us to pull from pull inspiration from that I'm going to add to the mix here. Let's see all masters figures. There's an old master's mix. There we go. Okay. Support that. Let's reload this. There's old master's mix 1A. Put on 2. Okay, cool. And now we'll just do a warm up set using these poses. And uh, we'll just get some gesture in to get going, to get the blood going. Uh, so, okay, Google, set timer for 20 minutes, 30 seconds. 20 minutes and 30 seconds starting now and here's a good one to start with i would say let's beef it well we'll beef it up about here i think that'd be good so let's get the classical music going again So for the warm-up set, just just worry about some just worry about like keeping things pretty simple and uh, just getting an overall kind of sense of the pose. These are just two-minute poses, so you're not going to get a huge amount of information in them, and you just want to get you kind of want to get warmed up too, so. I've got to find more reference images of Greek and old masters sculptures and stuff, Greek and Roman and old masters sculptures, because there's a lot of good photography of them from different angles. And they're really handy for working out stuff three dimensionally. Anyway, so I got kind of like a. This isn't the loosest gesture in the world, but this is a start of just like the general pose. The angle, I'm looking for stuff like the angle of the hips versus the shoulders and stuff. Um, paying attention to that, this leg here is carrying the weight of the pose here. I'm thinking about stuff like the kind of cascading waterfall effect that goes down the goes down the body. But I want to keep things pretty simple. So this pose here, it's kind of a loosely drawn pose, but there's a lot of good information in it. The nice line of action going through the pose, like a big C curve. Kind of the angle of the shoulders there, then we got the angle of the hips. Paying attention to the corners of the hip of the front of the hips. I wonder if I should put on the classical music from 2001 Space Odyssey. That'd be fitting with the theme of my channel for sure. So maybe this needs to be leaning forward more. So at the gesture phase, you can you can pay more you can like pay more attention to like what the figure is actually doing. Like in my case, I didn't hunch I didn't make the figure hunched over as much as it is happening there. That's part of what I want why I want people concentrating on gesture for these warm ups. So we can kind of like pay attention to that so we get that a little bit more right, or we move more into gesture for the for the other longer poses and the draw over studies.
One of the gestures there to kind of get you to feel out the pose. It's not supposed to be an accurate record of anatomy or whatever. It's supposed to be expressive to the feeling of the pose. And you shouldn't be trying to aim to just imitate the pose. You want to you want to pay attention to what's happening there, but you want to kind of think more about what your reaction to the pose is. Like, what are you seeing in it? What's your emotional reaction to it? Oh, that reminds me, I need to switch it to the big view. There we go, for this. So Twitch chat now gets the big view of the, po of the time poses and stuff. Somebody in Twitch chat asked me, like, what's, do you have a link to the reference you use? If you're in the Discord, I can upload it during the break. So this one, I think, is actually a study of David from the rear. But again, don't get caught up in, like, complex anatomy or forms right now. We're just doing gesture for the warm-up. Like, we want to get our gesture working because that's going to drive the shapes that we make later. If we can't get the gesture working, then the, other, then the whole thing just falls apart. I'm going to look for spots to insert little bits of anatomy here and there, but for the most part, I'm going to be paying more the lion's share of attention to gesture in these short poses. Very tricky pose, but in hindsight, maybe I should have done something like this. Let's see here. Alexa, stop. So you can add a little volume to your gesture too, without really getting too heavy into shape or construction. Doing a little bit of that now.
Another thing that can help is as you're going through these, you can make be making notes like this about the direction that stuff's going in. Like the lean, making a note here about the lean of her body, body there. Let's get this one. There go, another back pose. But this will help you kind of get vibe with the, the intent of the drawing. Like here, here's an arrow here, here's an arrow there. I'm going to maybe use arrows right now to kind of key me into the gesture a bit more. Illustrate my thought process to myself and to you guys. What I'm trying to do. Anything that gets you more conscious of what you're doing can be helpful. Like this. <laughs> There's one there, but it also goes up here. There's like a big kind of a twist and thrust on the pelvis there. This will be one of the Russian Figure Academy pieces. But same thing, I'm going to try using like arrows to sort of help me anchor my intentionality with what I'm trying to go for here. Let's wrap around the head there. I'm going to see if we can sneak in a little bit of um, Renaissance compositional observation study in today, too. Stuff like the golden ratio and stuff that they used in their compositions, among other things. There was a few other principles that they used. And some of them were just weren't even using systems like that. They were just really good about placing things. Let's maybe do a different one. There we go. I want something a little bit more full figure.
So one of the things that you, one of the many things that like, you can record an observation of when you're doing the gesture, it's like that kind of lean of his upper body, for example, over to the side. That feeling of leaning the body. How the torso kind of feels relaxed there. If you can get that feeling, the feeling of that in your gesture, then uh, that's good. And remember, like, the, these are not going to be exact copies of what we're drawing. We're trying to, like, riff on what they're doing and get, like, a few drops of what they're doing in our studies. GG actually means get good, not good game. Oh. My bad. I thought GG means get, 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 got, 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 got. Hmm. This one might be better for a draw over study. Let me try to find a... Yeah, that one would be good for another two-minute pose. one's a pretty straightforward looking standing pose so it's a good opportunity to practice like the kind of directional waterfall flow here yeah hello so we get this tilt of the hips kind of like this I think the classical music definitely puts me in a better, studious frame of mind. Not necessarily because, you know, classical music, classical music, but, like, I get, like, flashbacks to figure drawing classes where <laughs> professors would play, would play, um, classical music. So it's helping me put, put me in the figure drawing class frame of mind. I don't really, I don't know if there's any kind of real truth to classical music improving performance or thinking or studying. I remember seeing like stuff that disputed those claims. I mean, whatever kind of puts you in the right frame of mind for for studying and practicing more the better I'm not doing that it's a very contained pose So one of the things we're definitely going to be doing this next week in my Discord is Art History Deep Dives. Be good to learn more about the Florentine masters and other various other painters that practice in their tradition. We also may discover some new favorite painters or something that we... Uh, you or I may have overlooked that might be worth studying from. Alright, so I gotta keep this in gesture. I'm getting a little bit too too literal with this.
Okay, Google, stop. All right, that was our last pose of this set. We're going to take a little break. Five or, ten, five or seven minutes or so. Okay, Google, set t timer for seven minutes. Seven minutes, and that's starting now. So that one felt like a pretty good warm-up set for me. I think the next thing we'll do will be a draw-over study. Because we're going to be doing back and forth between draw-over studies and these. Uh, but another thing we might do, actually... Now that we have these gestures, maybe we can go back through the same... Actually, you know what? We can go back through the same poses we just did. Uh, so if you have done gestures, what we can do is we can go back in and we can put in shapes. I think that would be a valuable exercise to do. And we can do that for the next set. Does that sound good to you guys, or would you rather do a draw or a study? Maybe apply shapes? Maybe we could try it? Yeah. I mean, it'd be good. While these while the poses are fresh in our heads to do that. And then we can do a draw over study. And then we can do another set of stuff. That actually sounds good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good plan. Yeah, because we did. I did emphasize everyone, everyone concentrate on gesture. And also the other thing is like if you if your gesture wasn't pushed enough, you can you can put some more gesture push in the shapes that you add too. Like if you want to, if you if like the if the gesture is like for example like his lean isn't isn't far enough over there, you can you can embed some of the gesture in the curve of the of the cube or whatever shape that you use to define the torso here or something. I think it's probably a good habit to to get into uh, to get into to like work stuff up. So we'll pro so we'll probably do like we'll do shape stuff and we'll also be looking for those anatomical landmarks. Yeah, we have a set of gestures and now we can try shapes and try picking out anatomical landmarks. Mozobot, uh, do you need a Discord link? Here's the Discord link for the Discord that we're using for today's Saturday class. Um, that's the Ethan Becker um, server. That I only teach there on my Saturday classes. Uh, this is the link for my personal Discord, the, the other link that just got posted by the bot in Twitch chat. And that one I that one's the one that I use for my study session for my like my impromptu study sessions and for um and for my Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes. Okay. Moso says they just don't want the feedback of running both Discord and Twitch at the same time. I linked it anyway for anyone who's anyone who just dropped in as well. I'm seeing some good results in uh, chat. Arts and Goodies is improving, I would say. They need to work up their confidence more. Uh, some of the stuff gets kind of floaty. This one feels a little bit more grounded, but uh, the main thing is, is like uh, when you're in the gesture phase, I want to get a sense that the figures are have some kind of gravity to them. They can't just be floaty. There has to be there. There can be floaty gesture to them, but they have to have like some kind of a sense of gravity and balance. That's just going to come with observation and practice over time of doing gesture. Um, and I see you. You've got bits and pieces of it going and uh when we do the draw over study later i can maybe show you how you can use draw over studies to understand that stuff a little better um because we'll be doing it part of the draw over studies we'll be doing a draw over in gesture before shape um i actually have an example of that from yesterday let's see here 
That's not a draw over study, but I started it with gesture. Um, this is, uh, yeah, this is one where I started it in gesture and then I added shape right here. The red line is the gesture, the black line is the shape right here. And that was done very quickly, so. See, these were not drawovers. This one was a drawover. See. But you can see I started this one with um, gesture. Uh, there was, I mean, there's gesture, like, there's, like, gesture here, but then I also added to it. Like some, I added some contour and uh, some landmarks and stuff. But you can see like this, for example, there's gesture, there's the, like this big sweep right here, there's gesture down here in this leg, and so on. I also like made a note about like the gesture of like, th this tree right here is basically composed of gesture, like in 3D, like volume, volumetric gesture in 3D space, basically. But here's some more like kind of anatomy bone, like simplified bone structure draw over. Uh, I kind of fucked that up a bit, but, um, and here's like a little bit more simple and also like kind of checking out, checking, like checking out like the surface of the 3D surface of what I'm drawing and stuff. Let's see. Okay. Okay. I decided to get into the discord. <laughs> oh, good. Welcome. See, there was the old man. Where's the old man when I did? Here we go. Oh yeah, this guy was really fun. I also did the same thing I was talking about with that gesture of the tree back there. But yeah, uh, no, this one I started with kind of a hybrid gesture approach right here. So there's like nooks and crannies of anatomy I added in there, and then I used like kind of a Lumis head structure there. And I did follow some of like the contour of the anatomy and, and so on, but there is gesture to this. There's the kind of sweep around the foot, the curve around the form, and the general kind of flow and ly lyrical feel of the figure and stuff. And then I tried to like tie a little bit more down with some gesture and I took some structure and it's a little bit more anatomy. Um, yeah, like you're supposed to do this stuff in order to internalize it. And these are a bunch of like crummy invented figures that I did using bits and pieces of it. I've got a, a lot more practice to do, but because these are really off proportion and stuff is really kind of weird, but that's why I'm doing this so I can build up my build up my uh, visual library and my knowledge. So let's see here. Um, so we're now for the, this next set, we're going to take those gestures we just did. And we're going to do a shape draw over. And those of you who are just coming in who didn't do the first phase, that's okay. Um, you can just do a gesture drawing for this set. Or you can double up. You can do a gesture drawing and then you can try adding shapes to it even when we skip off the uh, original drawing. So I'm going to give us another 20 minute set uh, to do the shapes for these. So, okay, Google set timer for 20 minutes, 30 seconds. Okay, Google, set timer for 20 minutes, 30 seconds. 20 minutes and 30 seconds, and we're starting now. So, um, also after class today, um, I'm going to end the class officially at like 5... 5.30. So it gives us a good three hours of practicing this. Uh, at 5 p.m. today, there is a um, Discord that is doing a... Um, drink and draw session and you are all invited to come and join me join me for that but they'll be doing online agio drawing together like where they do like a bunch of it's a bunch of student artists and a bunch of like animation professionals most of them are like adult swim tit mouse animators um but they do like a drink and draw like once every other saturday um and uh where they just like draw they draw random stuff together for a warm up, and then they do. Then they pick a topic, and they do like a j big giant uh, drink and draw session. So anyway, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this guy right here. But anyway, you guys are invited to that. So anyway, so I'm kind of like sort of using. I'm trying to use some shapes to define the anatomy here a little bit. I'm kind of using a little bit of a hybrid egg cube shape here for the rib cage. 
but honestly like a for a rib cage you can just use this you can use like kind of this piece symbol defining the underside of the rib cage and stuff you can really simplify like the you can see like how the the underside of the rib cage is a lot more complex than just this little triangle that i'm making here but you can use abstract stuff like that to sort of plot out where the stuff is so then some other important anatomical landmarks before we move on these little points at the tops of the shoulders here which you can which can help you fill in the clavicle like right here I'm actually thinking two minutes is too little for doing the structures on these. So I may double up on, on David here, just so we can have a little bit more time. So we're not going to necessarily get through the whole set of these all at once. But I want to give people more time to really slow down and think about the structure. So um, I've got this kind of like... The point of anatomical landmarks is to kind of give you a GPS system to navigate over the figure. In this case, I'm using this, these little dots of the corners of the rib cage and the bottom of the sternum right here to sort of uh, GPS navigate the front of his chest. Uh, I did I did notice that I got some stuff wrong here. Like his chest is actually more facing out over that way a little bit more. That's okay because this was a, a quick rough chest. Like these don't have to be perfect. Just as long as you are aware of those mistakes and errors. And sometimes there's room for interpretation for interpretation when you do these too, so. But if you are like doing a longer study where you are trying to be accurate, then you would want to really fix that. I'm kind of drawing the outs. So like another thing you can do is like you can start breaking up the the legs into cylinders, kind of like this. And they're not exact cylinders, like some of them kind of follow the form of the muscle group area a little bit. But using cubes, cylinders, and spheres should be the main building blocks that you use. Boxes, cylinders, and spheres should be the main building blocks that you use for make designing your shapes. All right, we're ready to move on to the next guy. So immediately, like one of the most important things that stands out for me personally is that little nape of the neck there. I kind of feel like I'll get a good result if I start from there. So I'm going to like use an ellipse for the base of the neck here. And then I've got, I'm going to establish the head. He's got, he's turned, his head is turned away from us. So we only get like a little bit of the side there. We get some of the back of the head a little bit from how he is. I also think that I think I've made his head a little high here, so lower that a bit. Maybe like this. I normally wouldn't do that, but I want to just for this drawing at least. I use the transform tools on a, on my drawing. You kind of have to learn to commit to stuff, usually. So it's not a good idea to get into the habit of doing that when you're doing studies, at least. Um, you don't want to use that as a crutch, but as a tool of getting the job done when you're, like, blazing through a storyboard or something like that. It's totally fine to usually do that. just don't want to use, like, transforming stuff as a crutch that erasing something and drawing again could solve. Or modifying the drawing could solve. So I am keeping kind of cubic forms in mind, even though I did kind of go... Again, we're going to double up on the time for this one, so... I did kind of keep sort of cubic forms in mind for, like, the shoulders here. Um, 
I kind of went straight for anatomy a little bit for a little bit sooner than I should. So I'm gonna dial it back a bit into shape. Let's see here. Hit this top of his shoulders about there, so the clavicle is gonna go like that. Like that. And add like this curling over the form. So we see like the top of his bias up there and then it kind of changes direction a little bit there, I think. The top and the side of his bias up a little bit. We get some of the underside of the back of the wrist, I think is what's happening here. So like that. And then like his palm. It's out like that. Evie never comes to my classes. Hmm. He can do what he wants. I, I wish he would come sometime. Because these are a real blast. I had a huge... I had a lot of fun last night doing last night's uh, master stu uh, old master's studies. I couldn't attend that one because I was too busy uh, in putting uh, programs on my computer. Mm. Well, I'll put the recording up on YouTube. And it's, all on the, it's already on the video of the day if you want to take a peek. So again, this isn't a race, so you don't have to worry about doing the whole figure. Uh, I think this one's a little unclear for our purposes, so I'm going to skip to one that's a little bit better. Let's maybe see if... It, yeah, this one's good. This one's a nice, clear front view of the torso. So we're going to jump to it. So for this one, I'm going to be a little bit more straightforward with my structure choices. Start with that egg of the rib cage. Um, kind of the center line from the from the pit of the neck down. Get that kind of peace symbol going on of the front of the rib cage. The angle of the bottom of the rib cage there. Then we got the angle of the hips. So I think he's leaning his hips forward a bit, so his body backwards, so it's something like this. I think the I think the top of the So normally when like the hips and the hips and the um back for a rest, there's something like this. So you see the top of the hips aimed more towards you and the underside of the ribcage aimed more towards you, usually. So, kind of guesstimating here. At what angle I would use with the pelvis here. Makes me kind of wish we had an x-ray view of his hips. Oh, we're doubling up on that guy, so... Should have made these fours. Or fives. I think fives would be good for doing, when we do another set kind of like this. We do like a twos for gesture, then we do a five, we do set of fives focused on adding structure and uh, structure and anatomical landmarks to the drawings. So we got this cylinder here of this thigh that's kind of turning into a cube here. Um, I sort of went a little bit further into anatomy with this calf, but it's still a cylinder, essentially. A cylinder that bulges. And then I'm going to put like a little cube here for the heel. 
to the foot, kind of an x-ray view with a sort of hockey puck front to the foot there. And then I'm going to like the... So, um, we'll get into this real quick. So, check this out. So, you got... You got the leg, legs right here, coming from the pelvis. Uh, generally speaking, the rhythm of the leg goes something like that. Uh, that also means that Let's see here, what's a good color to use? Blue. That also means that like, so the calf here, um, the outside bulge of the calf is a little bit higher than the inside bulge, kind of. And that kind of sort of counterposes the angle of the ankle. So you get something like Like that. I'm getting muscle memories of Bridge of George Bridgman right now. Showing this. So that means that this would be a little bit more like that. We wanted to push that. So let's see here. We did not do this one, so I'm gonna grab one of the other yeah, that this guy right here. This guy's another, um, this guy's a very, I picked him because he's a very straightforward pose. So, my favorite, my favorite spot for me to start is that pit of the neck. I'm gonna start with that. Establish the ellipse of, establish the ellipse of the base of the neck. Go up to the head where I'm going to establish a Andrew Loomis head. Real quick. Just in that crash test dummy side plane right there. Sort of guesstimating his. Guesstimating the angle of his face is kind of wrapping a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. You can kind of see it on his hair, too. So now I got that head established here. I'm going to make sure that it doesn't skip away from us mid-drawing. I'm going to establish the egg of the rib cage. Get that peace sign going. Right there. Because I did my gesture pretty plainly and clearly here, um, there's enough for me to kind of work with here. And uh, I can also adjust the buttocks from how I did it there, because it's going to be kind of saggy if I do it how, my original, how I did my original gesture. Adjust it up a little bit. I can play off these rhythms and adjust things. If they're off, I can use the rhythms to exaggerate or connect stuff together. And remember, the goal here is not to like get an exact copy. You're not going to be able to do that in these short studies like this. It's to learn a few things from, from it by sort of reconstructing from what you're observing. And like I said, there's uh, like I said earlier, there's ways to do master copies where you do want to like stress close accuracy, but you kind of need to do stuff like this first to kind of vibe with it before you really do that.
I'm going to finish off some stuff with the limbs here. We get that kind of squared off effect happening at that base of that arm right there. I'm looking for opportunities to add indications of cubes and cylinders in the shapes here. All right. Let's see. Okay, Google, how much time off on timer? Three minutes and 49 seconds remaining. So I'm going to give us a, okay, Google, add two minutes to timer. Done. Two minutes added to your 20 minute and 30 second timer. So I'm going to You've get got five minutes and 41 seconds left. So I'm going to give us some extra time on this one right here because this is a back pose. So I'm starting with the egg because the egg of the ribcage seems very important to me for this. I'm going to at least establish like the general space that the head occupies here too while I'm at it. And I need to get a better sense of like where the center line of the back is. Because it's curving down around here kind of somewhere around where the spine is. Right here. It's going back down around and curving into the buttocks somewhere back here if we have x-ray view. It's very high up. So a big reason I wanted to do this is because then I can use it as an opportunity to show a little bit of the scapula. So first off, I'm making this kind of rhythm over here that's like sort of imitating the bone that is connecting up to the shoulder right here and the clavicle. It's on the back. These are This is what's coming off the top of the scapula of the back. The scapula is an interesting bone that, here I'll do a really simple version of it, that does basically like this. So it has this kind of like triangle wedge shape sort of thing that the um, ball socket of the arm connects to like that. Oops. And uh, there's a there's a bony protrusion that comes out of it and like connects up to like the fuses with the clavicle around the front. So you can sort of see in this one because this guy's like raising his arms forward. You can kind of estimate that the scapula is going to be floating off the back a bit. And like coming up on either side a little bit like that. We'd really need x-ray view to see exactly what that thing's doing, but that's like a rough guesstimate about what it's doing. So now I'm gonna go through and add some like extra cylinders and boxes to the form in the time I have left, but I really wanted to um, get into that. So this is a pose that is actually showing the front of the torso, but also a bit of the back and the scapula. So we do have the anatomical landmarks present of the front of the torso, which is really interesting to me. Where, in fact, it's like, I think the corner of the ribcage is like all the way over here. It's a little bit tr tough, tricky to tell how dark that is. So this is a very interesting pose for sure. That'd be my guess. I think the I think the landmark is somewhere there. If you think you have a better sense of where the placement is than me, feel free to post. I'd love to see. So I'm going to keep it on there, probably pause it. So 
these are kind of like shape study vignettes that we're doing here. I'm gonna, there we go, there's the music. Let's get a little bit of the deltoid in there. See, I'm, I'm using like a kind of a cube shape here on um, the top of the thigh right there. It's curving down to the cube shape at the front of the knee. And then there's more cylindrical forms going back here. Kind of a curved cube happening there. So the, okay, Google, stop. There's a bony landmark in there. If we can do x-ray view and uh, apply our bony landmarks and our skeletal stuff, it, the basic form of the skeleton is going to be something like... Oops. Actually, no, the, the scapula would be more over here, wouldn't it? Because this arm is pretty up there, so the scapula would be really pulled forward a lot more, wouldn't it? There's the spine going back in here, and it's going back down in there. the kind of pelvis form in there Get like the bony thigh go down to here get the kneecap cube of the kneecap in there yeah I just wanted to throw that in there real quick I think the scapula is maybe like all the way over here oh no wait it, you can see it right there it's tricky. So the fuse point would probably be here then. Anyway. So yeah, those were fun. And I'd love to see what you guys have made and posted in chat. So let's take a look. Some from Slam Rockwell. Some from Mosobot64, Arts and Goodies. Arts and Goodies, I would uh, want you to have, like I said, I want you to push more confidence in, in your in your gesture and in your structure. Like, I'm not really seeing the... Uh, I'm not really seeing you pick specific shapes to, be, to stick with. Like... Uh, I want to see you push your gesture more and get more confident and fluid with your gesture um, to make strong statement with it. And I also want to see you push your shapes. Like, um, I want you to make more decisive, sta more decisive statements about what shape goes, what shape you're using where. Like, for example, like on this guy right here, I picked. Oh, I'm using the, I'm using like the egg shape for the rib cage. Uh, I'm going to use the cube for the pelvis and stuff like you make those confident shape decisions and and, uh, and utilize them I got a little bit kind of uh, more kind of in, in, into like apps and like an, anatomy abstraction for this one but there's still like down, even down here like I'm kind of using the um, this kind of ellipse di dish shape that you would use normally for like the pelvis But yeah, I mean, uh, when you're doing the shapes, remember, um, spheres. Spheres. 
cylinders. And boxes. Those are your functional building blocks of adding structure to your jet to the gesture drawings that you've done. And remember that the the um, just as with gesture, like your shapes have direction behind them. So keep that in mind when you're making them. Like, this has a direction of that it's wrapping over this way, like this. Oh, I didn't set a timer for the break. Okay, Google, set timer five minutes. Five minutes, starting now. And then let's see. I mean, just keep just keep practicing, keep building your confidence. It's, it's going to take going to take a lot of observation and repetition to get it in there. But I want you to really kind of push yourself for, further and keep at it. Let's see, uh, schmack earlier, yeah. Dango. Those have those have some really nice gestural feeling to them. I could actually see picking out some good shapes in them. Some of them they could be pushed a little bit more confidently to get more of a sense of weight, weight and solidity to them. But I do get a sense that that there is, um, I do get a sense like this of the attitude and posture and gesture here and stuff. And there's a good amount of interpretation going on where you're kind of playing with it that I like. Let's see. Going through down through these, get an overview of everyone. So these ones, I think there's some good stuff in them, but I think you're going a little bit too detailed too quickly, possibly. Like I would want to maybe pull back into into shape adjuster and stuff, but don't worry. Uh, that's also going to be what the draw over study that we're going to do next will be about. So we can kind of orient. Uh, you can use draw over studies to kind of orient yourself. If you feel yourself getting kind of loosey-goosey. These are really nice and effective, I'd say. Really nice warm-ups. There's some good stuff here. Some of it kind of loses it a bit. But that one has a good feel to it. These has a good feel to it. Uh, I can see you progressively warming up on these poses, too. Peep -ater. So you're doing traditional. Uh, I would say get more confident with your lines. Uh, and that, that's just a matter of practice and pushing yourself. Mm -hmm. I'd give more feedback in depth, but we've got to move on to the next set pretty soon. Let's, see, let's uh, pick what we're going to be doing, I think, for the draw of a study. So I've got a bunch of new content. Um, there's old master stuff, and there's also Caravaggio stuff, and some other things in here. Some Baroque painters and other other stuff, and some modern stuff in here. Some Rembrandt in there. Rapine, right there. Michelangelo. This one might be really good. Yeah, I think we'll do a draw over of this. So this one I'm going to upload to chat. This will be our draw over study. Yeah, uh, Shimax says, I kind of feel like I'm just buying chicken scratch on top of more junk. Yeah, well... If you're doing that, that's usually a sign that you need to pull backwards a little bit. That means you need to. Um, uh, that means you need to concentrate on fluid single line gesture. Um, and you and concentrate on like the overall flow of a pose, instead of and like making the pose a singular unit instead of breaking stuff up. Like you do, you can kind of do that Alex Wu gesture drawing thing 
that we've been doing in order to get that, like, for example, on this guy here that we're about to do. Um, you can just if you try to think of, like, oh, the way to simplify the post in the simplest possible line, like, something like that, because of, like, the overall line of action of the pose. And then you can add, like, a secondary line of action, like, for this. Oops, like, for this foot here. But you see how if you start with, like, a strong, decisive statement that says something, like, the other stuff starts to, like, fall into place a little bit more, like... It's not too, it's not too out of the question to kind of now think about the secondary line of actions, lines of action, how they co-relate. Like that. And I was just, just thinking in terms of line of action and just, and like simple, simple gesture for that. Make a simple statement. But you do a lot of those and build up your confidence to be able to do more kind of like flowy stuff. Okay, Google, stop. You'll just do a quick demonstration of that. Like I am, I am, I am, this is not chick, this is not really chicken scratchy. This is me trying to pull, pull line in, in a similar direction. So I want people to keep that in mind. And I've got to work on it too, actually. I've got to work on making more confident line decisions. So on that note, I'm going to maybe push that a bit when I do this drawover study. So now we've got our image here. It should be uploaded to Classroom Chat. It's not, so I'm going to upload it. And I'm going to set our timer for 20 minutes and give us a good 20 minutes to really pay attention to this. So first things first, we're going to do a line of action study on this guy. Line of action gesture study. So like, what's the simplest possible line that we could summarize what this pose is doing here? Something like this. And like, what other lines can we add to it to kind of elaborate on the pose? Something like this. For that other leg. And so on. And you can have fun with it too. Like, you can put some... You can be playful with how you're placing it. Like, you're not doing a copy, you're doing a proactive interpretation of it. You're trying to bring it alive on your own terms. So now that I get something like this, um, I might try elaborating that with some more kind of volumetric shape. So let's see. Or actually, no, I think another thing would be that would be good to do would be to... Try to see how I would contain this as a single shape. How would I contain this pose as a single shape? Well, I might contain it like something like this. Maybe get rid of that. Actually, no. Yeah, some of that down there would be okay. What this does is it, it is thinking of the pose as a singular unit. Like a singular statement. And 
And then from here, I can go in with, let's see, I'll grab maybe, yeah, I'll grab this again. Then I'll maybe think about how the gesture is playing against itself, like how the gesture of the different limbs and the parts of the body are sort of creating this kind of like cascading waterfall or ski slope like effect, sort of. And add a little bit of volume wrapping over the body a bit, kind of play with that some more. I don't think I set a timer, did I? Alexa set timer for 18 minutes. No, not Alexa. 18 minutes, starting now. Well, we'll use Alexa instead of Google. So I can get like the center line in here, get a little bit of the shoulders and stuff. I think I'm making him look a little bit hunched, so maybe raise that a bit. So I'm doing actually like a gestural study here now, and after I get pretty satisfied with it, add some more volumes to it here and there, I'm going to move into adding some shape construction to it. So add a little bit of gesture to the to that fabric that's there. I'm not really going to get into drapery today, but I'm just doing a little bit of it there. Massing in some of the fabric. So the gesture is there just to give you like an overall sense of the pose, pretty much. Like the flow and the weight of it. The statement that the pose is making. And in fact, the shapes that I'm going to be doing the draw over study with are not necessarily going to be like literal to the figure that I'm drawing. Rather, I'm probably going to try to interpret them riffing on the gesture that I did. Because I'm trying to make the pose come alive on my own terms for this study. There's still stuff I want to like pick up on from, from the old master. But here, let's try with this. I'm going to try with like an, ellip uh, an ellipse for the hips right here. The corners of the hips. Here, load the opacity on this some more so we get more visibility through it. We get some anatomical landmarks right there. But this is what I mean, like, uh, once you have the gesture pretty well established and you're feeling pretty good about it, you can go in and start kind of working in shapes and making decisive shape decisions around the gesture. Let's see here, egg shape for the rib cage. And there's like a center line that's gonna be going on here to the... Get the simple forms of that underside of the rib cage, that simple peace sign. There, we got the pit of the neck there. And the top of the shoulders are somewhere about here actually, aren't they? Kind of looking at like for the, I'm looking for like those shoulder bumps, top of the shoulders, sort of like the little divot that's connecting the clavicle to the shoulder. So somewhere like there-ish, I want to say. I remember to use those handouts I gave you from Twitter uh, that I posted to Twitter. If you want to find some, if you want to use the anatomical landmarks landmarks to um, plot out stuff on these figure studies. So let's see, maybe I can get rid of that, some of that. So I think the bulge in the back on this figure is actually coming from the trapezius rather than the ribcage. 
the trapezius muscle back there. Like the ribcage tends to be a lot thinner than the volume of the overall torso with the muscle. So I'm going to include a little bit of the bone here. I'm not going to get too much into the the calf bone, but they said there's an outside bone here. We'll get into leg anatomy more detailed later, but there's, um, in the simplest possible terms, there's like, um, there's another bone in your calf. Looks something like this. So that's a really shitty representation of that. So let's try this here. So you got the kneecap here and the other thigh bone coming up off top here. You got the main tibia. The main leg bone right there. And then you got the fibia. Right here. So one, two, like that. You have something like that too in your um in your forearm. The ulna and the radius. We'll get into them those more in the future when we cover uh when we cover um arm anatomy more in detail. When I say we're going to be covering anatomy in detail, it means we're literally going to have a session entirely around arm anatomy, basically, in the future. But we'll, we'll touch on stuff like that, because it's good to get, it's good to sprinkle a little bits of anatomy knowledge in there. Uh, here, here's a good opportunity for me to sprinkle on the ulna and the radius. So since the palm is facing down, we know that the um, we know that the bones are good. Like when the palm is facing up, the bones are parallel. The uh, forearm bones are parallel, but when the palm is twisted the other way, they actually turn over each other like this. And we know that they're doing that because that palm is facing down. So because they have those landmarks in place, it's not too hard it's not too hard to like figure out where the connective tissue of the torso is. You um you may recognize A little bit of the Loomis skeleton coming into play here. With how I'm handling the deltoids in the tops of the shoulders. I notably did not handle the, because this is a drawover study and I don't really need to be as concerned with establishing the head. Um, I didn't start with it this time. It's usually a good idea to get the head established early on in your drawings because you can use it as a measuring device. Let's see here. So open in the top of the neck. You can see curve for the neck. The trapezius back in there. Connect it up. Like the center line for the face, about there. And 
Use a cylinder. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? It looks like you don't have any timers set at the moment. Okay, oh, yeah, that was Alexa. Alexa, how much time left on timer? We have 8 minutes and 30 seconds left on the 18 minute timer. Cool, we got plenty of time. So there's a lot more I can I can dig into for this, for sure. Okay, so I started with like a basic cylinder, and now I'm doing a thing where you often like start with a shape, like a like for example, when you're inserting anatomy and things, you'll often start with like a like a construction shape, and then you can insert anatomy over the construction shape. Like in this case, I'm inserting the bulging form of the bicep here, and a little bit of the tricep down there. Like, if you have those, like, simple shapes in place, then you can break them down into more complex anatomy. And this is something that, you, that you're going to be doing in longer pose drawings. Uh, which we might do sessions of in the future in here. We mainly, we mainly do short pose stuff because um the stuff the way the stuff I teach is mostly like animator oriented. But there are times to like do long pose drawings to really like understand what you're looking at and uh exercise your visual integrity. So we probably might do some long like like what we're doing now is like great lead into doing long pose studies. I think the longest freehand pose we'll do tonight will be like a 10 minute pose at the very end or something. 10 or 20 minute pose at the very end. No, we actually did a 20 minute pose at the very end yesterday, didn't we? Uh, this is, this is still beginner friendly. I am going over some more complex information today, but the act of doing a draw over of an observation study of old masters is something that anyone at any skill level should be willing to to try out and do because you can uh, you can learn a lot about like the line of action you can just learn a lot just by like drawing over the top of them and trying to break it into simple shapes um, you're gonna be doing a lot of study of existing work and real life in order to improve your skills and uh, studying like doing draw over studies or copy studies of old masters it's a great way to uh, it's a great way to get started on that even if you're a beginner and you will suck at it I mean I'm sucking right now this is not and this is like this is a trash study compared to like amazing draft people. I've seen that doing like amazing studies of this stuff. But that's I mean the point is like everyone starts as trash. And the point is to keep doing stuff like this, keep observing and learning, getting it into your bloodstream and exercising it. So I'm pretty good along with that. I'm going to get a quick sip of water, but I'll be back to work on this some more. I've been stretching and some water real quick.
Alright, I'm back. Uh, I'm going to talk real quick about tri pose triangulation, which will help you for long pose studies in proportion. You don't have to be as concerned with them with doing like a drawover study like this. But like, say for example you were doing a, a long pose freehand study of this, and you wanted to keep it pretty proportionally accurate. Well, you do po you do triangulation basically. You can use you can even use a ruler for this, but it's best to do it freehand. But like, when you're starting a drawing, you'll do something like well here I'll do a sh you'll do you'll do like a guideline that's something like this, where you mark the top and the bottom of your page, like that, and you try to mark uh, of the top the top and the bottom of the pose on the page. And the, it's like the side points of like roughly the where, roughly about where the widest points of the pose are, and uh, you try to like triangulate on that, and you now have like kind of a basic grid of the pose, and that's why you want to establish the head first, because like once you establish like the head size and so on, you can use that as a you can use that as a unit of measurement for the proportions of the rest of the pose and correlate it to other stuff like this guy right here. He's about as big as this area right here. And, uh, about as big as this, somewhere around close to about that, but as big as that area there. And, uh, down to here ish. I don't know. You can do this stuff. You can tilt it at a different angle, and so on, to find different measurements, and so on. It's like, oh, uh, the head is X number of units down. Like, this is about, this is roughly about four un head units down close to it. Four heads, for example. But you do that before you do the, f you put the figure in. You'd, like, triangulate this stuff. Uh, often, like, holding your pencil up to the figure. To, like, first measure the head. With like one eye closed. Then you like measure like the head and then you like hold the pencil up to different parts of the body with that measurement you took of the head. Sort of get like a proportional sense of the figure. So that you often see like a lot of long pose figure drawing people will start their pages with something like this. Okay, Google stop. That's not really necessary to do that for a quick sketch. Uh but for Nothing's long things playing right now. Alexa stop. But this is a device but you you'll see this device come up in long pose classes a lot. I think I might be able to find an example of it. Let's see here. Yeah, you can see it in this. This is a free PDF uh, from Eric Gist's website. And uh, you can see he um, he marked off the top and the bottom of the foot of the pose. It's got a kind of a grid, like a cross grid right there that is kind of marking off the midpoint a little bit. And he's got like, a, he's r roughly marked where like the side planes of the, uh, you know, marked where the, like the, rough endpoints of the sides of the pose are, but you can see like you saw he starts here. He starts with the head to measure the rest of the figure. And he's using very, very this is more kind of illustrator oriented gesture. That's a lot that's not as playful as um what we're doing. That's very Riley method driven sort of things. And then there's like this is the structure phase right here. Or he gets more into shapes and stuff. There's a little bit more of anatomy. There's a little bit of anatomy in being inserted in here too. But yeah, if you want this PDF, this one's this is a free PDF on Ericus website, and that can definitely help you guys out. So I'll put that in classroom chat, and I'll put this in Twitch chat. I'm going to grab uh, some caffeine real quick, and then we'll be back for another 
Uh, actually, yeah, yeah. We were about to break. We were about, this is the break right now. Um, so, okay, Google, set timer five minutes. Okay, Google, set timer five minutes. Five minutes, and that's starting now. So I'm going to go grab some extra caffeine. Boost up my energy a little. Cereal. So I hope this doesn't get too ASMR here. I'm going to take a look at what people have been posted in chat. There we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do you guys see what a difference it makes to do a drawover study? Like it's starting to, it will start help, uh, helping to key your brain into what's going on. For this right here, arts and goodies, um, I would keep in mind uh, that what's what's happening with the pose here is he's actually leaning and resting on his, uh, resting uh, a little bit on his hand and on and his buttock against that like kind of stump behind him. Um, I, I can get even even though this is a really kind of a rough driver, I get more of that sense in this. Like think about what the pose is doing when you do doing drivers. The fun the fun thing about this is. You can keep doing these. You can come back to this same pose again, the same image, and doing more studies of it. And honestly, you could break this down. You could break this painting down, alone down in so many different ways, so many different times. But the cool thing about this study method I'm showing you guys, this is something anyone, any one of you at any skill level can do and do relentlessly, and you'll get a ton out of it. Um, 
Especially if you are doing this and you combine it with like like Michael Hampton's book or um, any number of really good figure drawing books. If you are combining the stuff from that. Okay, Google, stop. If you're combining stuff from those kinds of books. Uh, with this, you'll be picking up on little bits of knowledge and you'll get a chance to try it out and test drive it on uh, an existing piece of work where the thought thinking has already been done for you and you're just trying to pick up on what they did Caravaggio's wildly violent <laughs> paintings where that he that's him that's a self portrait of himself as John, John the Baptist could he beheaded by the way he was, Caravaggio was kind of a fuck up there's some good documentary stuff on him. But he painted in like the 1500s. He was like in the 1500s, 1600s, I think. Yeah. Um, when he painted this stuff that looks like really, really modern. He was a wild dude. Amazing painter. Terrible person. Rembrandt, uh, I need a refresher on his history, but um, if I recall, he had he had money issues later in life, but I think he was mostly an okay dude. I don't know. Rapine, right here. This Ivan the this famous Ivan the Terrible picture. I mean, the drama in this is just so intense. The lifeless gaze of um, of Ivan the Terrible's son here. And the grieving, the distressed drama of a man grieving the loss of his son. And also, like, the storytelling in the full painting here. Of, like, the violence that happened that led up to this moment. Blood stain on the ground. And things turning around, turned around in the room. The, carp the carpet and everything. It also feels very real. I mean, this is kind of like, there's a little bit of stage lighting thing going on here, but this feels like a snapshot. This feels like you might have just walked in the room on a crime scene, seeing this, basically. This is a lovely, lovely composed image right here. So I'm picking out what we're going to be doing next. Um, I think we might go back to uh, time poses. This next set. Yeah, we'll do that. But this, these will be five minute poses each. So change the timing to five minutes. And I'll get us started with some good poses here. Preferably have us be doing stuff that hasn't that we haven't done yet that we didn't do last night. Maybe these these rowdy dude these rowdy gents right here might be what we start with. Okay. Uh, actually, give one second. I'm gonna have to change. Grab that real quick, then I'm gonna start. Okay. Here we go, got my caffeine going, and we'll dig into some, uh, some time poses. So this will be a set of fives. Hang on one sec. There. Just gotta move that out of the way. 
So we'll do a set of fives, uh, then we'll probably do another draw over study, and then we'll end with like one more set, I think. That'll be what we'll do. So, uh, okay, Google set the timer for 20 minutes, 30 seconds. 20 minutes and 30 seconds, starting now. All right, so we were getting a little stiff there. So I'm gonna try to like liven things up and have some fun with these. Like you know, these don't have to be perfect studies. I just want people to vibe with them. Like you can save being perfect with them for when you do draw over studies or if you do longer studies of them. I want people to kind of Want kind of people to kind of feel them out a bit. I think it might be a good idea to show you guys why we're studying the way we're studying. What I have in mind and why we're kind of pushing in this direction. There's some good animation stuff from uh, Powerhouse in particular on the Castlevania series that would be really fun to show. It shows off some um, pretty, go pretty good high level figure drawing involved with... Um, with animating some of the characters in that show. So you guys enjoying this? Feel free to sp speak up, by the way. I've enabled voice chat in the Discord. Hey. So do you have any input? Do you like the class format? Do you have any suggestions? I'd love to get some long poses in. Yeah. We'll probably work our work our way up to doing some long poses this next week. Like doing a lot of master copy studies is a good way to start with that. I mean, there has to be a reason why we're doing the long poses, because like... Oh, and uh, and to get the integrity to to do that, I think studying old masters and stuff like this is a good i is a good starting point. I got a full five minutes to work on this dude, but I'm thinking about revising some of the gesture instead of going straight into shapes too too far. For example, like I really like uh, I think like the compression of his legs is something that I should have emphasized a little more. I'm gonna make some observation in the last minute. I'm gonna make some observational notes about this thing using my friend the arrow the gesture arrow it's just really fantastic a really fantastic tool for kind of figuring out the flow of things and sort of like turning your brain on to thinking in those terms
We can probably do the same thing. Actually, yeah, yeah. Let's concentrate. Let's try to see if maybe we can concentrate on gesture for the full five minutes. It's worth working that out. And then we can do the same thing that we did for the first two minute set, where we do another pass, putting the structure in more. I did put some structure in that guy, but and did a kind of a draw over double thing, but here, hang on. We're not going to use this pose that's on screen. I'm going to pick a more solid one. It's one we've done before. It's one we've done before. It's a nice one. We'll do this one. It's nice. It's nice. We like to have fun. Okay, we have fun. So animator gesture tends to be very, very kind of loose like this. I'm actually like doing this with I'm I am lifting up the pencil a little bit, but there's like a lot of this a lot of the time when I do these where I will deliberately not take the pencil off the paper because it helps me think like a sculptor. A little bit more using the line. So this is actually two figures here. Uh, I'm going to be put left, left, less emphasis on the girl figure here, but she is present. And you can see the top of her torso there. And you can see her legs in the cloth back down there. But I'm going to be putting more emphasis on the dude. So now that I have this kind of loose smattering of the figure, I'm going to go in on another on another pass, make some more observations, maybe kind of vibe with some of the shapes and the landmarks a bit. Let's see. Play it by ear, because we have a whole three minutes to kind of mess with this. So I'm going to see if, I can, if there's any gesture I feel like I should be pushing. But I'll have another... I'll be able to have another pass at this later, too. So let's see here, we got the pit of the neck, shoulder joint, so we can actually see like there's one there, some around there. Also, as Steve Houston says, if you're going to fuck up, err on the side of being dynamic. So at least if you fuck up, it'll be interesting to look at. That's sort of what I did with this foot here. That's, he didn't say fuck up, but he says if you're going to make mistakes, err on the side of, uh, of being more dynamic. Quite a lot more down on this one than I thought I would. Still a lot more scribbly than I'd like.
I think that's a habit I might need to kind of resolve a little bit more. There's a pretty wild picture. Uh, I think for this one, you'd just want to like pick a figure from it, but there's a uh, we'd have to crop it for that, so we're gonna pick something else. So let's see here. I think I have enough here to kind of wrap my head around the gesture. It's flopped over there, with his head facing out. Wrapping over the form here a little bit. So I'm not gonna. I'm a less concerned with the with the figure in the rear here. Is this Jesus, by the way? Is this supposed to be Jesus being taken down from the cross, or like Mary Magdalene or something? Yeah, also, the piece is called Pieta. I forget the artist though. Mm -hmm. Also, fun fact: there was a Gospel of Mary Magdalene. And it was actually a really feminist gospel. And so guess what? The old these stuffy old coots in the Roman Senate who canonized uh canonized the original scripture left they left her out. She was basically she was a, a she was another disciple, essentially. But she got canonized out. How do you like that? Isn't there a whole series of other yeah. book more supposed to be Yes, there is like the Gospel of Barnabas, for example. Uh, in the Gospel of Barnabas, like Jesus basically came out and said, I'm not the son of God, I'm just a dude. Basically. No, he did. He did. He did. He said, I'm just a guy, I'm just not the son of God. A each of you is basically the son of God. Like and which I think is a wonderful universalist message, but it also contradicts with the whole supernatural thing. Uh, that the church wanted to push on the idiot masses. So what could have added like an interesting wrinkle to um, a more universalist message got kind of trounced by the same coot, the same stuffy old coots that um, that edited edited Mary Magdalene's gospel out. In fact, like uh, that's the other thing. Uh, there, there was like the so there was a. One or two of the other Gospels, I forget which one, uh, at one of the other Gospels, um, Jesus says, I am the Son of God. That was actually called the Blasphemer's Gospel. Because, like, that was considered blasphemy to, you know, speak for God, like that. And uh, there was a lot of debate um, whether or not, like, it was metaphoric back then uh, that, that, Jesus, that Christ was the literal Son of God, or whether he was just, like, a, a figure that was kind of channeling god or, or whatever there was debate in christian circles about that oh well too bad the roman senate kind of just fucking uh, the rome the just fucking railroaded everyone all those complexities and all those wrinkles just got fucking steamrollered by the fucking romans and then the romans themselves got uh steamrolled by barbarians oh yeah they sure they sure did
These Romans are crazy. Uh, I think we will stick with this one a little longer, because this is a very... And does anyone have any objections with sticking with this pose for another five minutes? Uh, did we draw the struck driver? Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm doing, because I feel pretty good about the gesture. Like, the gesture is pretty easy to read on this one. Uh, you can see the slump of the the, sh the arm coming up, the limp body and stuff. As with anything, the more of these we do, the better we get, so... <laughs> uh, let's do more of these next week. Sound good? Yeah. Yeah. And I definitely want to do some like art history deep dives and stuff. Like I, I, I'm, I'm kind of like trying to use my, my curi my curiosity now as a much more of an, a proactive tool. In uh, art stuff. Like learning a, I learned a whole bunch about castles last week, and that reminds me. Um, Sunday, I'm gonna be playing Valheim again, uh, doing some city building stuff, and I would love to invite people to join me for that. Because uh, we'll, we'll also be playing the game regularly. Um, like I have a creative mode cheaty account that I play on that where I can supply people building materials to build the medieval city I'm trying to put together. And uh, it'll be an opportunity for people to do research into medieval structures and try building them themselves. And we can experiment with making a plausible looking medieval city in Valheim. Or like at least like an RPG. It's plausible in terms of being in a game, a video game level design RPG sort of thing. But um, but that should be pretty fun. We'll be applying some of the stuff I've been doing in research in medieval architecture, and just ha just having fun. Sunday is my video game, my video game day. Although I do plan on getting some more studies like these in tomorrow because I feel like I would want to keep momentum going. So I'll do some of those and then reward myself with Valheim or something. Yeah, but would anyone here be interested in doing that tomorrow? Building a medieval city in Valheim. And castle and stuff. And uh, from, uh, hmm? is it like Minecraft or something? Like... Kind of. It's like a open world survival game, but it's like really well designed. It's got kind of Dark Soulsy sort of uh, feel to the, especially to the boss fights. Um, it's a big hit on Twitch for a reason. For newer players and stuff, like we we can we can just we can start the game off playing normally, but like actually you you can you can just play the game normally. All that's gonna happen in the game is like I'll be supplying people with building materials to um to like uh, like stone and the other materials they need to um help build the city that I'm working on. And people can build their own little spaces and kit them out with cool, fun decor and stuff. We'll build like a uh, a city that has like some kind of a built-in history to it of some sort, like a mercantile. Like I have some ideas, and then people can kind of riff on and elaborate on them. Some of them are like I have an area zoned off, like a, a sign there that says this is a uh, this is a um, rich manor area, or this is a um, 
uh, and I'll basically be acting like a, a project director a little bit. It'll be fun, and we can also play the game normally and, and like fight the um, game boss, the game bosses without without cheating, of course. Yeah, anyone who's down with that, let me know, because I'd love to... Oh, the other thing is, uh, um, a, a dude from Valve, who I've been playing video games with, might be showing up to play, too. It's uh, Chet Falziak, who's a long-time... He was a long-time Valve, um, Valve dude. He was a writer on the Half-Life series and stuff. Okay, Google, stop. It's gonna be dropping by my game, my city game server. Uh, possibly Sunday. So we can show him our wonderful, beautiful city. Uh, the other thing is that a, um, you can host your own game too. So we can join someone's game and help them make cool shit also. Yeah, I think the legs are a little stocky on this guy. But overall, this feels pretty good. I did kind of go contoury with my gesture and stuff. But there's like, I mean, like, uh, there's kind of like, I drew it with a... With a sense that there's like an egg shape of the ribcage under there, I drew this with a sense that there's a cube for the pelvis in there without physically drawing it in and stuff. The legs are the legs are kind of screwy. I want to get Alexa, stop! Jesus Christ! But that would be something I would maybe want to do a draw over study to kind of. Resolve, but that turned out really nice. Okay, Google, set timer for five minutes. Okay, Google, set timer for five minutes. Five minutes, and that's starting now. You did. Very good. So we'll be on a little break here. For five minutes. How much time we got? It's 4.40 right now, so we'll be starting at 4.45. We'll do maybe, um... Hmm. I have an idea. I'm thinking, uh, ten minute... Hmm. I'm thinking, uh, two ten-minute poses. Or one ten-minute draw-over study one 10 minute free, free study of the same pose. What do you guys think of that? I'd like to just do two 10 minute poses, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good to me. Two 10 minute poses. I'll preemptively pick one then. This is a very nice pose. This one also shows off gesture really nicely here, too. I'm actually leaning towards this one. I love this one because it's like, you, hey. Is that, is that a Michelangelo drawing? I think that is. So is there anyone that stand out in particular that you guys would be interested in doing? I've got a few ideas. I'll just be shuffling through these. Hmm. That sculptor might, might be a good one.
I'm going to say the homework for this should be to do uh, as many drawover studies of old of uh, Renaissance masters and good figure good figure artist stuff as you can. I'm going to be doing that tomorrow for sure. You know, we could do a freehand study of this for 10 minutes because we already did the drawover study of this. We could start with this. What would be our second pose though? We'll just pick a second pose when we get to it. So we'll start with this. I will say I already did that freehand. I didn't, I can't pull this down guy? images to draw over, so I just did it freehand. So it'd be just doing the same thing over again. Yeah. <laughs> Are you good with doing that again? I mean, I could live with it. Just. <laughs> okay. Do a better job, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking Monday uh, we might actually go back to doing quick pose gesture drawing too, because like after doing these kind of longer serious poses, it might be a good time to do a quick refresher and get some vitality into our work. What you what what I think a lot of you will find too is like you'll you will have a lot more vitality in your poses because it's really really searing in and paying attention to like old master stuff is hard is like hard mode and going back to kind of like freehand gesture stuff is like oh in some ways a little easier but yeah i'm going to prescribe uh that we should definitely like for sunday i would say if you do if you do any practice on sunday make it like uh, do several drawovers. Spend like a good ten minutes or something on like a at least at least like on an individual drawover. Okay, Google, stop. And move these these guys out of the way. And the cool thing is you can just keep doing them over and over again. You'll pick up you'll pick up on something new every time you you do more of them. So let's see. Should we do this pose? Any objections? What we'll do this pose? You can put me in this pose or that pose. All right. So, okay, Google, we'll, we'll, so, uh, okay, Google, set timer for 10 minutes, 30 seconds. 10 minutes, and that's starting now. So we'll just be sticking with a 10-minute pose period instead of, like, the usual 20. But if we are feeling pretty good about this pose, we may I may add on another 10 minutes just for this pose. Which is sort of what I did last time. Like, we, it was feeling pretty good with the pose that we were doing towards the end. So I just extended it. And if you guys are down with that, I can do that again for this pose. But remember, doing these is not a race. Uh, it can kind of be tricky to sort of tell yourself to slow down. I'm going into this guy a little bit faster than I probably should, but that's okay. I mean, I'm getting a, I'm getting a sense of how to pace myself, still. And we're not going for absolute perfection here. I just want like a kind of a good feeling that sort of evokes the pose that you're trying to interpret. And then I want you to break down the structures. Um, as best as you're able to. According to your own interpretation and design. Like
like I think I'm pretty far along with that, so I'm gonna lower opacity on this a bit. And let's try maybe adding a little bit of structure to it. Let's get a ring for the pelvis. Get those landmarks in there of that pelvic tilt. I think his chest is actually a little parallel. But his shoulder is up, up there. Bum of the no, I, I I can kind of track it a little bit more. It's kind of, it is kind of going up a bit because this pectoral is going up a bit too. Um, or the line of the pectoral specifically. Like that. Let's get that rib cage in there, bearing in mind that the back end here is kind of bulging out because of his muscle. Is that a JoJo? Well, if it's a Michelangelo, it probably is. That's uh, Michelangelo is like heavily referenced by Hiro Hiko Araki. I, I was considering actually sneaking in some of uh, Araki's like rough, uh, rough drawing work, which has like this really nice gestural feeling to it uh, that he pulled a lot of ideas from, for, like old masters, like Michelangelo for doing. I've done that before previously. Like I ran a class session where we, where we were like where um Hirohiko Rocky's rough drawings were part of the of the session of the session time poses. Kind of using like a mixture of shapes and some of my my existing knowledge about anatomy in here. Those of you who are less studied in anatomy might find this a little trickier, and I would advise just sticking with the simple shapes. So I don't know how safe things are going to be after I get a COVID vaccine. So I don't know if there's other strains of the virus that might not be covered by completely by the vaccine or whatever. But uh, I hope that I, that I get it soon. Oops, what am I doing? Ah, oh, I messed this all up. All right. Time for, time for me to peel back what I'm doing here and pay attention. Let's see. So I like this. This.
That hip's pretty high up there. So the ball comes up to about there. His head position is a bit off, but okay. Ball's probably quite, quite a bit smaller than I'm making it. Looks like a ball. I'm not sure what he's holding. This might be something specific to the story being told here. I think he's holding an apple. Hmm. I think he's like a Greek god of hunting or something. Whoever this is. Does anyone happen to know the story behind this mythological painting? sort of concentrating right now, that's why I'm not talking too much. I think I need to do like a lot more watching of really good figure artists that might help me a lot too. But I definitely I definitely feel like I'm getting my juice back. Uh, my juice going pretty nicely doing these studies. Okay, Google, stop. So that was a 10 minute on that. Do we want to extend that? Or should we do another one? I think we should do another one. So let's find a good 10 minute pose. This is a pretty nice one, actually. Yeah, we'll do this one, okay. So when this pose flips, we'll just, uh, okay, Google, set timer for my nine minutes, 50 seconds. Nine minutes, and that's starting now. Okay, Google, add 50 seconds to timer. Done, 50 seconds added to your timer. E. All right, so. Right down here to the pit of the neck. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who curated this playlist? This, this is not really my ideal classical music playlist. Not that it's bad, but this is like... I would want like stuff that's a little bit more kind of. Chill, let's see, busy. I don't know. Chill. The no, and the stuff that is like not as um. Um. Bombast. Uh, overplayed. If I can put it that way. I don't know. If I can. Like this is like making me think more of like Christmas time or some shit. Uh, like iconic. Kinda, yeah, like kinda. the stuff that gets like over, that's like a little bit too. I mean, it's classical music. It inherently is it inherently is the definition of overplayed. Since it's had centuries to overplay. 
but um but like the stuff uh, the stuff that's like more thoughtful that you don't really think of necessarily immediately when you think of classical music if you're not that knowledgeable of it like i want to play some more of that kind of stuff so it kind of helps with the cerebral vibe a little bit you know let's get a little pretentiousness in our sessions you love being pretentious from I don't know. No. It's okay to be a little a little pretension now and then is Is chair a little pretentiousness now and then is relished by the snobbish man. What is the name, actually, of this song? Messiah by Handel. Seventeen forty-one. I thought so. So it was pretty recent. Hence why it's so mawkish. So that, I was just thinking, like, I'd like to go, like, maybe read some of the critics who didn't quite care for this song, what they thought of it at the time, you know? Like reading what old classical, like like old like, um, like those classics that, we, that are ubiquitous that we take for granted now. It's always funny going back and reading like these scathing critiques of them by people from the time period. They are either kind of like, yeah, that, that, that's kind of right, or they were kind of like terribly stupid in hindsight or something. Stupid and small-minded in hindsight. But I kind of feel like there would be some really funny critiques of the of the, of, uh, the Handel's Messiah back at the day. I'm using this as a little opportunity for a quick torso anatomy study. A little bit of the underarm there. This I don't have a problem with. This is like pretty recognizable. But it's kind of hard to get sick of this song. Mozart.
The reason why you use shape. The gesture is there to get to kind of get you going, and the gesture is there to get you kind of uh, with the sense of the weight and the flow of the figure and the blocking of the figure a little bit. The shape is there to kind of help you place the physical mass of the figure, and then you can build the anatomy into the shape, or you can uh, carve carve the anatomy out of the shape or add to it or subtract from it to make it more anatomical. And I still I still kind of suck at it in a lot of ways. That's why I'm doing these practice sessions so that so that I can get better at it. And like I said, the big the big jump that I'm hoping to make is when I'm able to kind of uh, is when I'm able to take a um, figure drawing class myself. Till then, I'm just gonna try to muscle as best I can with these class sessions, which are fun class study sessions for all of us. I might have something that might interest you. Um... Oh. There's a live model that's interested in doing some modeling with me on Zoom uh, tomorrow. Oh. One PST. I can I can DM you an invite if you're interested. Okay. Are oh, they doing like well? Uh, how do you mean like they're doing the um? It's not a guided class. We're basically just gonna do like various timed poses. <laughs> various oh. timed poses. Um. Would there be like a model fee? I mean, there should be. We were just gonna make their PayPal available. He uh, he just wants he just really wants to pose, and he doesn't hmm. really mind if he doesn't if he doesn't well, get paid to do so. For me, it'd be short known just to do it, but that uh, but keep in touch with me on that because I am interested in something like that for the future. But yeah, I mean that, that's cool. I'd definitely be down with doing that that in the future. Yeah, this is uh, I still there's like lots of stuff that I kind of need to kind of need to figure out and work out like some choppy things here and there like this arm here the way it's kind of going back there is kind of funky, um, but there's a lot of stuff I'm getting out of this one that I kind of feel like the the issues that I'm having in other areas in this are just going to be ironed out over doing just more of these stuff. I'm drastically simplifying what I'm doing with the legs here, by the way. Because my emphasis has mainly been the torso today. Oh, good. Okay, Google, stop. What time is it? It is 5.05. .05. Cool, we have enough time for, like, one more set. I actually really like doing those ten minutes. You want to do two more? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Google, set timer five minutes. Five minutes, starting now. So I'm going to give you guys the invite real quick to the uh, to the drink and draw. They're actually getting started now. So it is on this server right here. I'll do a quick invite link here. So here's the link to the to the drink and draw server. Putting that in the classroom chat and Discord, and I'm gonna put that also in uh, it's the stream chat for Twitch. Uh, I'm actually gonna open, uh, you know, I'm gonna open up the. I uh, well, I don't think they'd be down with it, but um, but here I'll show you a little bit of the server. The um, there's their come and draw announcement right here. I don't think they're in the voice chat room just yet. Yeah, they're going to be getting started on that pretty soon. But they sh yeah, well, there, there they go. But um, after we get done with this, we're going to do that. They, they usually take about an hour to get warmed up. Uh, and they're going to do a... Oh. 
Oh, they are starting to free draw. Cool. Okay. So it's in Agio, which is a antecedent, uh, which is the, the predecessor to Magma Studio, which is the one that I use. So like, eh, it's like there's a bunch of people that are maybe drawing together, and this is like their free draw thing. <laughs> you know what? I, I think I might weird them out by do making the last two ten minute poses I do in here. And make them really confused about why there's like this really nice anatomy study going on in there. I don't know. I, um, I don't know how they'd feel about me like broadcasting. The, yeah, I better err on the side of caution. So I'm not going to do that. But if you want to jump in there right now, they have a free drawing space there. Like uh, the the only reason I wouldn't I wouldn't not, don't want to do that is because like I don't want to like air what people are doing without their consent on uh, on a Twitch stream. Be sure to drink Wil Wilkins coffee though. That's right. The stream is sponsored by Wilkins coffee. What do you think of Wilkins Coffee? Never tasted it. Kaboom. Hmm? I think it's just that the Muffet would always blow up the other Muffet after he admitted he wasn't into Wilkins Coffee. Yeah. Do you like Wilkins Coffee? Who is Wilkins? I've, I've never Wilkins seen Wilkins Mr. Coffee. Mr. Wilkins makes milk Wilkins Coffee, the finest coffee in the... Uh... Tri County area. I see we have a few coffee drinkers here. You can show your coffee solidarity by adding a coffee emoji to your name. Uh, or I'll add it for you against your will, like this. <laughs> Enjoy your coffee, Kachi. Desktop right now. I don't think I can add an emoji if I change my nickname. Do you want some coffee? Yes, I do. Now, who else wants Wilkins coffee? I'll take some coffee. Yeah, I'll take some. Take some coffee. Fitz friend. Feel free to ch uh, feel free to fix your name your username if I fuck it up. By the way, okay. Who wants who else wants coffee? Schmack, you want coffee? You know what? Hand, hand me a cup. Give me a cup of Joe. There you go. <laughs> Never had Wilkins, though. Yeah, most people haven't because they've been out of business for decades. <laughs> I'll have some, too. Oh, uh, well, we've got to get back to our drawing set. So if you want coffee, here's the emoji in there. Just copy-paste it into your username or whatever. Also, uh, let me... Before we get back... Okay, Google, stop. Before we go back, here's a couple of custom emotes from my from my personal server. Uh, well, this one isn't. This one isn't for my personal server. This one's from Buff Pups Jim, who's another streamer I enjoy. But this is a nice little combo of animated, uh, animated emotes, right there. <laughs> a jittery little kitten there. All right. So enough of uh, enough of this coffee banter. Let's get back to art. So we got... I'm going to have us do two more 10-minute poses for the remainder of the, of the session. And then we'll hop over to, to the drink and draw to hang out, chill, and draw. Uh, and uh, a quick preview of what they do over at the drink and draw. Um, I have some images from past ones I've intended on my desktop here. 
uh, which I need to organize, by the way. But, let's see here. Okay, this is the uh, a cabin one we did. <laughs> yeah, it's a mix of, like, uh, there's, like, Adult Swim animators, Titmouse animators. Mostly Titmouse and Adult Swim animators, and, uh, and, and student artists and stuff. For the, for the drink and draws. There's a couple other images in there somewhere, too. Oh, well. Okay. I think that's what hell looks like. Or heaven. <laughs> yes. Alright, so let's go through these. and So I did the, a draw or study of this guy, but I kind of want to go... I kind of want to do him again today. Freehand, so we'll do him for the next ten minutes. Is it... A, this guy looking good for you guys? Hello? That works. Okay. Alright, okay Google, set timer for 20 minutes, 30 seconds. 20 minutes and 30 seconds. Starting now. Hmm. Oh, excuse me. Trying to think back a little bit to some of the observations I made when I initially did this. Also, Steve Houston says, "Air on the side of being dynamic, and that also often means like pushing the pose a little bit beyond what you're seeing, somewhat." I'm gonna try to do that a little bit. Sometimes what'll happen is like you try pushing beyond it, and you actually wind up closer to what it actually is. Because there's a tendency to be timid when analyzing the pose. Let's see here. I've got sort of a rough starting point here. So I'm going to maybe try carving in a bit more. Try feeling this guy out a little, a little bit more confidently. I just seem like some good rhythms that give me good vibes doing him. Let me throw the tree back in here a little bit too, I think. Tree is kind of part of the composition, so I might as well just rough that in. Just doing it quickly, loosely. Now that I have that down, start playing with defining things a little bit better. The center line there. Let's get kind of the egg shape of the rib cage there. His hips are about here, I think. Mm. 
So you want to get something that gives you a good feeling at any phase that you're drawing it. Inherently, when you're trying, when you're concentrating on observing the figure, and you're not as comfortable with structural forms, it's going to look pretty indecisive. But I'm feeling a little bit, quite a bit more warmed up now, and a lot more confident. So now that I've kind of played with the gesture, I feel a lot more confident about building my shapes out without even looking at what I'm uh, looking as long or trying to copy directly what. The model is because I know what I'm trying to say with the pose with my study I already know that like when I when I start taking a figure drawing class like I, there's going to be a lot of like horrible bad habits of stuff that I'm doing here that I'm going to have to unravel and unthink uh and it's going to be great like looking back at what I was doing here was like yeah I was doing that wrong <laughs> and not just like I mean not just like the normal like doing that wrong because you need to practice it more but like oh i was practicing in the wrong i was like working the wrong art muscle in the wrong direction doing that and if i'd known better i could have could have avoided that it's inherently gonna that inherently just happens when you're self-teaching so I'm, I'm having to do a lot of like trying to like watch how other artists draw and uh listen to what they have to say in uh, video tutorials and other things that I've been watching, but I, there's no there's no substitute for like getting draw over uh, like getting feedback on, on your own work from from a, uh, a master. So I'm gonna be on the lookout for a good figure drawing class. The main one I'm interested in is uh, analytical figure drawing with Kevin Chen at Concept Design Academy. But there's a lot of other ones that are excellent also. That one was just particularly recommended to me. I think I probably beat this guy up. So I have more pixel space to work on. Yeah, I drew him itty bitty. Someone's asking in chat, like, uh, that they, someone said in uh, Twitch chat that they've been struggling uh, to be happy with their art lately. Uh, that's usually a sign that you need to feed your head with stuff that inspires and interests you. And also that you need to kind of think outside the box of not just art, to look at stuff that excites and interests you. Uh, but that winds up inadvertently juicing your, your desire to draw. Uh, but if you are struggling with drawing motivation, first off, I would give yourself the 15-minute rule. The 15-minute rule is you give yourself, even on days when you're feeling kind of poopy, um, you always sit down every day, usually the same time every day, if you can help it, and you spend at least 15 minutes a day to draw drawing. What often happens is you wind up spending more than 15 minutes. But... If you just spend 15 minutes, that's okay. You put in your 15 minutes. 15 minutes is... Whoa, that is one fucking huge arm. <laughs> I better fix that. I'm gonna, instead of resize, I'm going to erase it. But yeah, use the 15-minute rule. 
and uh, use the 15 minute rule to kind of uh, get yourself regular. The thing is, is like when you are working in the industry and stuff, and when you're doing art professionally, there are days you're going to feel your, your art isn't going to feel very good. Sometimes you do need to take breaks when you're not feeling it stuff. But uh, I, I got news for you. Um, the cycle of like feeling tired, feeling tired and, and like not getting very good reward out of um, drawing your art is something that everyone experiences. And uh, you can talk to other, the best way to get through those is to talk to other artists about what you're going through. There also might be other things that go that are going on in your life that would be, would be things you'd need to work out with a therapist or people in your personal life too that might be getting in the way. Um, there might be medical issues. If you're having trouble with energy levels and concentration, that would be something to talk to a nutritionist or a psychiatrist about. Um, fatigue is a detrimental to your ability to do art. Well, fortunately, a uh, regularity of regular art study can often be like a counter, have a counteracting effect on fatigue because of how it engages the nervous system. Art can be very extremely therapeutic. And if you find a good strategy for using art as therapy, that works for you more is the better uh so uh i, I have a quick question to ask uh, do, do we want to stick on this pose more or do we want, we want to go to another one for the next 10 minutes change change okay all right so presto changeo give me a second i'm going to move this move this guy off to the side here so if, if, if there's any pose in particular people have seen that that's a nice one. We may do this one, but let me go through these some more. Okay, Google, add one minute to timer. Done. One minute added to your 20 minute and 30 second timer. I think, You've got 10 minutes and 27 seconds remaining. Yeah, I think we will do that guy. And I lost him already. Or was he? It was one of the Russian figure academy poses. Oh, I could just do this here. Save. Load. There it is. Okay, this is our last pose for today. Much less renaissance -y. Uh... The, uh, the Renaissance figures are really great to do because they do usually have, especially Michelangelo, they have a really good sense of gesture to them. Um, th these are much more analytical, but you can see some of the gesture that they put into them a little bit. But if you can keep in mind that kind of playful sense of gesture to these, you can use that on these as well. So a major defining characteristic of this pose is, for me, definitely would be the hips. I would say. The head is kind of blocked off. Um, but you can still use it as a measuring device. There is a top and bottom to it. Like if you were doing a long pose here. One of the takeaways I'm getting from this figure is that severe lean over to the side here and of the body with this arm up raised up with like the scapula coming up here stuff i'm sort of sketching that into the gesture as i'm making some kind of notes here so this is kind of like a quick overview my understanding of the pose or a lower opacity on it to kind of 
tear it down and break stuff down. So I just want to get my strong impression of this pose down quickly. So, um... Getting back to that person who asked, who asked about um, feeling burned out. Talk to other, keep talking to other artists about about how you're feeling about that. Uh, that would also be a good, in addition to the other stuff I mentioned, that's also a good opportunity to do research into finding resources to train from. For example, I would maybe look into like Modern Day James and Proco and stuff, find videos of that and um, listen to them talk about principles of drawing and principles of anatomy and figures and stuff. Um, I would play, I would watch, uh, I would maybe like watch um, live demos that artists, there's a lot of them on the, Pro, the Proco channel in particular. There's a lot of really good live demos by a lot of different artists on the Proco channel. Um, Watts Atelier's uh, YouTube channel also has some great motivational um, videos where you can just watch them do a live, a live demo where they talk a lot about uh, a lot about like a uh, art business stuff and struggling with motivation and, and getting how to pace your practicing. They fit in like little tidbits of knowledge about that stuff and are pretty reassuring. The Watts Atelier guys are really fun to watch because they're kind of like the Bob Rosses of figure drawing and how they and how they instruct. If you want some motivation, definitely watch the Watts Atelier guys. But if you feel if you're feeling lost, that's a sign you need to you need to enroll in a class, my dude. You need to enroll in a good good drawing class because like uh, I'm not a professional teacher. Uh, I'm trying to help people help hopefully get some people started, but there's going to be a lot of missing stairs for people that are kind of hard to deal with unless you get with an instructor who can really sit you down and uh, and help you and like who's experienced at like dealing with people at even at beginner levels for example um i would actually recommend the watts atelier guys as as someone for beginners to enroll in so they teach fantastic beginners classes um i do know that the concept design academy and the cgma courses for beginners are fantastic too um But I mean, dissatisfaction in your art. Do you know? Uh, you know? Do you know what dissatisfaction in your art means? It means you have a desire to be get better, and there's nothing shameful about that desire at all. If you feel lost, uh, just know that there is hope for you, because there's a trillion different ways to train and study. Um, the 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 important thing is to just keep at it, even when you're feeling kind of funky about it. And the other thing is that this stuff takes time to, to process. Like, art is a physical act. It, when, we, when I'm having people do these, these study sessions, it is not just... Um, it is not just about learning the technique and understanding the technique, no. It's also about giving your nervous system and your physio physiology a workout. Because you need to have your hand-eye dexterity in shape. You need to have your ability to process information three-dimensionally and fit it together in shape. And that takes practice, like your spatial awareness and stuff. That's, just, that's something that needs to be exercised the same way you exercise a muscle. Because you lose it when you don't practice it. And that's why, like, you can't just... That's why, like, when you, you start drawing art for a while, you suddenly kind of... Bleh. So, um, sticking with it over time, uh, particularly if you have some productive um, exercises to fall back on, 
Uh, one of them, of course, is uh, is drawing, doing drawovers of. Uh, one of them is definitely doing drawovers of uh, figure drawing, or copy studies like this. But uh, the point is, uh, if you stick with it, um, the stuff will start to click over time. Like your dext your hand eye dexterity will gradually start improving. Um, your observation skills will also improve too. You got to stick at it. And if you're having trouble picking what less picking what exercises to do, uh, maybe talk with some other artists and they can help you with that. Um, uh, just Bring this up in my Discord some more. If uh, if I don't know if you're on my personal Discord, but here's my personal Discord. And also there's the Ethan Becker Discord. I don't know if you're in that. Please let me know if you are or you aren't. Aren't. But you you should talk to the people there too. And it, it if you can come into the voice chat, even if you're not on voice on if you're if you're not don't have a microphone or you're not comfortable talking a voice. Come into the voice chats of when people are talking and try asking, uh, try, might take, might take more than one try because it really is dependent on who is in the voice chat at the time. But, um, they can give you great pointers of people to, of like people to study from and, and exercises that you can do that will help you out. Um, I mean, I could give you a couple exercises that might help you with your burnout a little bit and get have help you have some fun for me like my dharma right now <laughs> everyone's got to chase their own art dharma uh, whatever juices them and excites them and interests them my art dharma right now is chasing um old masters and classical painting I'm chasing uh every that's what my that's what my classes have been like lately. I'm trying to I'm doing like a variety of um a variety of stuff chasing whatever I think is going to juice me and possibly juice other people. So if I'm feeling juiced, it it becomes infectious, hopefully. I'm really enjoying this. Like I'm running into a lot of my flaws and stuff like the way I handled this leg is kind of a little funky, especially the knee. Uh but you want to be brazen about your flaws so you can fix them. And that's, I'm de getting that good brain buzz up here doing this of like, yeah, I'm improving. I've got more to improve that. But now I can see my flaws easier because I'm drawing clearer now. Okay, Google, stop. <sighs> that was a good, good session. I really enjoyed that. I got a lot out of it. I actually want to do a off stream session, something like this tomorrow. So stick around for Discord for that. We'll probably do something like that before we get into playing some Valheim t tomorrow, if anyone, if anyone is down with that. But I'll be announcing that in my Discord. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to... Um, we're going to go over to... Uh, oh, also, another thing. Um, in my personal Discord here, we have an anti-burnout discussion section right here for exactly what you're talking about what um what uh X X X Z counter in my twitch chat uh, mentioned so please bring it up here and again on ethan becker's server here um like for example look down here uh there's not too many people on right now stevie's usually on he's usually good to talk to in particular but uh some of the more experienced artists here Try bringing up what you're struggling with to them. You can also ask me if you see me on voice chat anytime. Uh, some Watts Atelier stuff. Uh, but yeah. Like I said, like, uh, I, think par I think for you, I think you need a good coach. And uh, I'll point you in the direction of, here's Watts Atelier. Right here. Uh, they have an online um, streaming and in-person class, but the online streaming one is fantastic, and I do recommend signing up for the classes for that. And they're quite they're quite affordable. Uh, the um, they also have a YouTube channel, and I do if you are having trouble with motivation, uh, watch them. 
uh, they haven't streamed too often lately, but uh, like this Riley Jester demo right here is really great. Uh, figure fundamental stuff, a little bits and tids, tidbits and pieces here. There's a lot of there's older like this this one right here is particularly good. This one's a year old, but it's really great. Even going back, even going a good ways back, there's some really good stuff to watch from them. So I do, would strongly recommend if you're struggling, anyone here, anyone here struggling with motivation, watch, watch, just watch these videos, just chill and watch, watch them draw, maybe draw along with them a bit. Um, like this here. Like this is basically a much better version of, of what I'm having people do here. Uh, so definitely watch this stuff. And there's like more stuff like this in their paid courses and their paid uh, their paid streaming lessons and stuff. So I'd point I'd point you in the direction of more stuff, but that's a good starting point. Like you'd be in great hands if you even if you just went to them. But um, that said, I'm going to uh, let's see. I'm going to have us go over to here. The come and draw online discord everyone's in here we're gonna pop in there we're all gonna pop in there one once and surprise them i'm gonna turn off my stream when we do that so because we i don't want to be on i don't want to be um i don't want to be like uh uh streaming anyone without their consent but uh here is the discord invite link again in both Twitch and that. There we go. So join this, and we will immediately pop over in mass over to their Discord in the voice. So thank you all for coming. I'll see you tomorrow on Monday. Monday we'll probably do some more gesture drawing um, and shorter poses. But uh, as but in keeping momentum with what we're doing, there's definitely going to be a mix of like anatomy and, and long poses. I'm going to be trying to see if we can get a class focused on hands this next week too. So, see you guys Sunday and Monday, possibly, oh, or over in the or over in the drink and draw right now. So, I'm going to shut it down right now. We'll immediately pop over to the to the their voice channel on the common draw online server. So, thank you. <laughs>